So what we're going to do is try to figure out, or or at least uh, examine the direction of the radiation or the radiative component of the electric field due to an accelerated charge. So I'm just going to give you a formula. It's not something you have to memorize, but it is something we're going to have to figure out how to interpret. And the radiative field, the radiative component, or this kink in the field lines, is given by the formula 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, the old constant again. Uh, it's going to be times a negative sign Q times the acceleration vector perpendicular. So it's the perpendicular component of the acceleration, which we'll talk about what that means in just a second. But it's a perpendicular vector divided by C squared, C being the speed of light, times R magnitude of r and it's not r squared it's just r okay it's just one it's just a 1 over r dependence so the field is actually going to get smaller with distance this radio field is actually going to go down with with distance but at a lower rate essentially the uh, it drops off with distance only as 1 over r not at 1 over r squared like the coulomb field so what we want to think about is how to use this formula to get the direction of the radiative electric field and we just have to go through some steps in order to do this because we have to be careful about the geometry here. So here are the steps. Finding the direction of E radiative. Step one. Draw R. Well, R is what? What's the vector R again? Way back when, when we started calculating electric fields. Points from where? From the source to the observation location. Okay, so R points, as usual, from the source to the observation location. And notice also, if we're talking about, let's say I have an observation location here, right? Well, R is pointing from the source to the observation location, so R is pointing to the right. And I let this go forward in time. What direction is the radiation traveling when I'm looking here at this point? From my point of view, it's, it's coming at me, so it's moving to the right, okay? And if I were down here, the radiation would be pointing that way, right, or, or traveling that way. If I were down here, the radiation would be traveling that way. So that is, if we know R, we also get the direction of propagation. So direction of R is the direction of propagation. It's just what way the radiation is traveling. Step two. Draw an axis through the charge that is perpendicular to R, okay, in the plane of R and A, okay, but it should be pretty obvious from our applications. Find the components of the acceleration along the perpendicular axis. And that's what we mean, what we mean by this A subperpendicular vector. And then finally, the direction of this radiative electric field is negative Q times A perpendicular. And where that comes from is if you think, if you look at this formula, we have a vector equation. We're doing scalar multiplication on a vector. So here's the vector, right? That thing is positive. That's not going to change anything. This thing is positive. This thing is positive. But we have a negative sign and we have a charge that could be positive or negative. So we need to think about 
negative q times a perpendicular in order to get the direction of the vector. Okay, if we have that, we know the radiative electric field is pointing in the same direction. Okay, so let's try it. Let's try an example. So here's a, here's an example. Here's a proton. We're going to do the same thing. Give it a, a smack or give it a brief pulse of, uh, of an electric field that causes, causes it to accelerate in this direction. And uh, we have two observation locations. I'm just going to focus on observation location P here, which is directly above the proton. Let's just do step one. What's the direction of propagation of radiation reaching up the observation location P? So we're not worried about the radiative field yet. We're just thinking about what direction is the radiation coming from. Okay, 60% of us say direction number one, but there's quite a bit of noise everywhere else. Okay, so we should talk about this. I, a lot of people, I think, this is a question that kind of causes confusion every time I ask it. And I think the issue is that you're, you're making it more complicated. It's simpler than meets the eye. It's, it's less complicated than you might think. We're just talking about R. We're just drawing the R vector, right? Because we know that radiation coming from a charge down here, accelerating that direction, and moving to location P would move upward, right? So if I draw the R vector, that's the direction of propagation. Done. Okay, from the source to the observation location is the direction of propagation. Okay. Questions? Okay. Just R. Just R. That's it. So if you so if you can draw a vector from charge to observation location, observation location, you've got it. Okay. Given that. Well, let's do step two first. We've drawn R. Now step two is draw an axis through the charge that's perpendicular to R. So I draw an axis through the charge, and that axis is perpendicular to R. So I'm going to call that the perpendicular axis. There it is. Okay. So I've had that axis. I now want to think about the perpendicular component of the acceleration. So what direction is that going to be? It's got to be three. It's got to be three. We're just finding the components of that vector, right? So you can think of it as like an, an axis. You have a, a y-axis and an x-axis. Well, in this case, you have a r-axis and a perpendicular axis, right? And we're looking for the perpendicular component. So I can break this vector up into two components. One is in the direction, one component in the direction of r, or call it parallel to r, and the other one perpendicular to r. So that is a perpendicular, okay? So it's just decomposing vectors once you have the axes, and that's got to be the direction of A perpendicular, right? Questions? Are we okay? Yeah, question. If, if it were an, okay, so let's, let's talk about it. If it were an electron accelerating in this direction, that doesn't change A perpendicular because it's still accelerating in that direction, okay? So let's ask the next question, and we'll come back to that. Uh, now, I, I, didn't, I don't actually have a printout of this question, so let's just ask it here. Delete that. Oops. And say, what's the direction of irradiative? When it reaches point P, okay? And so it's not going to get there instantly. It takes some time to get there. But when it reaches point P, what's going to be the direction of the radiative electric field? So it's going to be direction 7, direction 7. Why 7? It's, there's a negative sign, right? So we have a negative sign times Q. What's the sign of Q? It's positive. Negative times positive. We have a negative sign multiplying this A perpendicular. So we get a vector direction that is opposite to A perpendicular in this case. So we get an uh, electric field pointing in that direction. Okay, so let's back back to the question of what if it were an electron? What if it were an electron? It'd be in the direction of a perpendicular, right? Because you'd have a negative times a negative giving you a positive 
multiplying a perpendicular, the electric field would be in the same direction. Okay. Now, again, you have to think, remember that this is not occurring instantly. It takes some time. So if I know this distance, this distance is R, when am I going to, at what time after, and it starts to accelerate at t equals zero, at what time am I going to detect the radiation reaching me? How do I calculate it? it the, the radiation is propagating at what speed? Speed of light, okay? So if the distance is r, that's going to be equal to what times t? C. Okay. Distance or speed times time, right? Okay. So I can figure out the time. It's going to have, I'm going to detect it at distance or, or at time r over c, right? Okay. So, um, so again, it's, it takes finite time for the radiation to reach us, but once we, once it reaches us, we can determine the direction using this method. Uh, try another one. Let's try another one before we do a quiz. Okay, here's one. This is interesting. What is the direction of a perpendicular if we're looking at location S? We're looking at location S. A is pointing directly towards S. What's A perpendicular? Okay, two popular answers here. We have four and we have nine. Okay, so it's either pointing down and to the right or it's zero. Well, let's go through the steps. You have S over here, right? Okay, so let me erase some of this. So that's A. I draw my R vector. That points that way. And I draw a perpendicular axis this way. Can I have a perpendicular component? No. It's entirely on the R axis. It's, right, it's like being having a vector in the Y direction. It has no X component. Having a vector in the R direction has no perpendicular component. So it's zero. So nine is correct. Uh, so that tells us what about the radiation? There is none, right? Which is what we saw before with that demo. Along the line of acceleration, there is no uh, irradiative and no per because there's no perpendicular component to the acceleration. Uh, we could, let's do one more. The quiz is short, so we can do one more. Uh, okay, let's. Let's see if you can do sort of two steps in one, okay? Just figure out the direction of A perpendicular at location S given this direction of acceleration. Okay, A is correct. A is correct because you draw a, an R vector, right, that points to S. That's R. The perpendicular axis is now this way, and we see that if I decompose this vector along these axes, that's going to be a perpendicular. So if this is a positive charge, if this is a proton, when the radiation reaches it, E radiated will be pointing in which direction? E radiated will be in what direction? Four, right? Because we have, again, a negative times a positive would give us E radiated in the opposite direction. If it were an electron accelerating instead, it would be same. It would be direction eight, okay? All right, so getting the direction is kind of the trickiest part. Once you have the direction, as usual, the magnitude's not so bad, and we'll, we'll deal with that next time.